Well, um, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, welcome to this uh, wonderful celebration of the um, achievements and uh, life of Athena Marcoux. Uh, I'm Igor Grant. Uh, I'm the chair of the Department of Psychiatry here at UCSD. And I do want to, again, very warmly welcome and thank all of the participants who um, are present here today. Uh, a number of you come from distant places. Uh, I know you'll be going on to the Society for Neuroscience meeting, and we are so uh, uh, pleased, honored, and thankful that you have taken this extra day to uh, celebrate Athena with us. Um, uh, I've been asked to, and, and, and want to say a few words about Athena, um, and then we'll uh, launch into our program. Uh, of course, no remarks uh, about Athena uh, uh, would be complete without beginning to talk about Athena, uh, the scientist, and the contributor to our uh, intellectual space in, in, in neuroscience. Um, her uh, goal uh, was to develop more efficacious therapeutics for addiction and mood disorders. Very early in her career, she was among the first to quantitatively measure uh, reward and motivational processes characterizing psychostimulant dependence in rodents, providing the field with critical tools to investigate the neurobiological processes mediating drug dependence. She was also one of the first to impl implicate the uh, metabotropic glutamate receptors as targets for treatment of cocaine and nicotine dependence, and based on her work, uh, NIDA and others are investigating the, po the potential efficacy uh, of allosteric modulators in clinical trials for the treatment of tobacco dependence. Um, her seminal papers on validity testing of animal models of psychiatric disease have also been building blocks for the development of current translational theory. Her pioneering work was recognized early by the ACNP in her receipt of the uh, Daniel Efron Research Award. As you know, this award is given to a scientist 45 years of age or younger for outstanding basic uh, translational research contributions to neuropsychopharmacology. <clears throat> she has authored uh, more than 200 articles, multiple book chapters. Papers are widely cited, as you know. Uh, she was featured um, uh, as faculty of 1000 Biology published in top-tier journals, some journals that I've never got to, so I'm very jealous. Uh, but she uh, certainly uh, uh, distinguished herself in terms of the quality as well as the quantity of her work. She was a principal investigator of a long series uh, uh, of peer review grants, uh, which have included uh, every mechanism in the alphabet soup of the NIH, R01s, R21s, U01s, U19, uh, and including um, uh, California, state of California uh, related research support. Importantly, uh, in addition to the contributions she made to our science, she um, was uh, instrumental in mentoring dozens and dozens, I think it, we counted about 70 um, trainees who have themselves now. Uh, moved on to become independent scientists and, in some cases, um, chairs of departments. And this is uh, an enormous contribution to the field, this mentorship that she provided. She was also a tireless uh, contributor to the field uh, in terms of being an editor, a reviewer, study section uh, leader, um, active in many, many of our premier uh, societies. Well. Uh, this was important to set the context of Athena as a scientist, uh, but um, most of the people in the audience here know this already. I want to also focus on Athena the person, the human being, uh, which is who I got to know uh, in working with her. And there are some adjectives that come to mind that I think may resonate with you. Uh, my first adjective is tough. This was a tough lady. Um, uh, I was talking with some English colleagues, and uh, they will be familiar with the phrase, the lady's not for turning. 
this was Athena. That was about Margaret Thatcher, by the way. But um, uh, not that not that Athena is anything like Margaret Thatcher. But uh, but her character was one of toughness, but toughness not in a hostile toughness. Toughness in terms of, you know, kind of a make my day toughness. Tell me what this is about, um, and I'll tell you if it's stupid or not. And if it was stupid, she would tell you that. Um, and um, some people cringed and ran away, but I think others learned from that experience and knew that it came from a spirit of um, real caring that uh, whoever it was was getting it right. And this was a wonderful attribute uh, that Athena had. But she was not a pointless criticizer. She was a doer. So there are people who will um, say things and say, well, this isn't right, and you, you know, think of it this way or that way. But there isn't a practical side to it, and uh, they don't necessarily go through uh, with a project. Athena was a consummate doer. Um, she... Um, uh, when I asked her to become um, a vice chair for basic science research in our department, she took that job with great seriousness. She helped us recruit uh, some wonderful people, some of our first recruits in the basic science. And it wasn't only that she spoke to these people and cajoled them and nice talked them and so on and so forth and told them how wonderful we were, but she also did the practical spade work of saying, okay, Where's their lab going to be? Let me work with the administration of the medical school to make sure they're placed appropriately. What's their startup package going to be like and so forth? In other words, she was doing my job for me, and so I loved her for that characteristic. But, but seriously, she was a partner, uh, not, uh, not uh, just a figurehead. Another aspect that I want to emphasize is her generosity. This is a person who, yes, she was critical in the most positive sense of the word, but she had a generous spirit. She cared about the people that worked with her and wanted them to prosper. She also cared about her colleagues. She cared about her department. And in her role as vice chair for basic science research, she went out of her way to reinvigorate our intellectual climate. Some examples. She set up a uh, seminar series on Monday afternoons, 4 p.m., um, to bring in people to do chalk talks. Some of these were people maybe we were considering recruiting. Other people were folks that happened to be in town that she dragooned in. And this turned into a very vibrant intellectual space. And in fact, when she was dying, um, I mentioned to Athena, you know, what would you think of naming this series after you? And, and, and she was a bit taken aback, but then said, oh yeah, that, that would be good. That would be good. And so we now have the Marku Research Seminar Series on uh, every Monday afternoon, which has been a, a great um, 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 uh, contribution to our department. Um, vibrant, another term that comes to mind. Athena was a vibrant person. She filled the emotional space of a room as well as the intellectual space. A person who loved life. She loved the world. She and Mark traveled, God knows, all over the place. We um, set up outside of the conference room where um, uh, the Marcu series actually takes place. Uh, there's a little flat screen that's supposed to be kind of an infomercial about our department, you know, various things. Isn't UCSD great and this kind? Of. But anyway, after Athena died, uh, we've been running... Um, uh, photos and images of her and her friends and what she was doing. And I was stunned. Here's Athena on skis. Here's Athena on a boat. Here's Athena on a bike. Here's Athena on, um, in a picnic somewhere in the wilderness. Uh, here's Athena quaffing wine with friends in, in her um, backyard or, or kitchen or whatever. On and on and on. These wonderful images of Athena embracing the world savoring the world. And that's, I think, sometimes um, uh, a picture of her we don't necessarily see, those of us who don't work closely with her, that, uh, that uh, she's not only this wonderful scientist, but she is a real uh, person and, and lover of life. 
The other word that comes to mind is duty. Uh, she was a dutiful person. She really carried through with whatever she was committed to. Um, and she did that right to the end of her life. Uh, one of the poignant um, um, moments that uh, I personally had with her, because we did spend some time together as she was becoming more and more ill, um, was she did not want to die just at that moment because she had unfinished business. What was the unfinished business? The unfinished business was not completing the transition of her research program and her lab to her successors. She wanted to be sure that was done right. And so it's not she was clinging to life mindlessly. She had a purpose uh, in doing that. And, uh, and that was um, a very touching uh, moment uh, for me, certainly. And I mentioned the generosity, the generosity in terms of generosity to her trainees and people, uh, generosity to our department in doing things that maybe other people might not do, who might want a title, but they kind of actually don't do very much. She wasn't one of those people. But generous in, in, in very uh, symbolic and meaningful ways. I remember <clears throat> um, seeing her walking to her office um, one day, and this was when she was pretty ill already, and she was carrying a, a, a bunch of lemons uh, from their backyard. And these were gigantic lemons. They're like grapefruit, practically. And she said, I want you to have a couple of these lemons. Um, take them to your wife, Joanne. Um, she'll enjoy it uh, in the cooking. And then when she was on her deathbed, uh, I don't know if Mark will remember this, uh, practically the last day, the same thing happened. She had a bag of lemons there, and she said, I want you to take a lemon. And um, uh, I just felt so touched uh, by this gesture, um, this wanting to uh, literally feed somebody, uh, uh, even though uh, she had a lot going on. So um, I guess I'd like to conclude uh, also with a... Um, a remark uh, from um, our former chair who actually recruited Athena and who himself is quite ill now and couldn't be here with us. And let's see if we can advance this slide. Okay, that's the usual thing that happens at a meeting like this. Okay, tech support, where are you? I've, I've done the... Huh? I'm up in the booth, sorry. Okay, could, I, could you advance the slide or help me advance the slide to the uh, next one? Thank you. So Lewis Judd, uh, as you know, was chair of our department for well over 30 years and um, uh, did enormous uh, work to build the department to what it is. And he recruited Athena, and here's what he wanted to say. Dear colleagues celebrating Athena Marku, I sorely regret not being able to take part in person, but I do want to join you in honoring a remarkable scientist, mentor, and friend I had the good fortune of recruiting Athena to our department. While her intellectual prowess was well known, it boop, <laughs> uh, was well known, it was not till I witnessed her immersing herself full force in every aspect of our department that we all came to appreciate her dedication not only to her science, but to fostering the growth of young investigators and reminding us of the high standards to which we should all aspire. Athena made us better. I miss her bitterly, but remember her fondly. So, with that uh, uh, in mind, I'd like us to um, uh, go to our program. And the organizers have um, asked me to admonish us all, or more positively, be mindful of the following <laughs> principles. One. Stay on time. There is a clock here, and the timekeepers are going to be brutal. In there will be, we'll use the Athena Marku method. We're going to come up and say, "You're done." <laughs> okay. Um, I think the organizers suggested there not be questions uh, at this point, but rather in the afternoon there will be time to have a more uh, general discussion. So let, let's not have questions, or maybe you could buttonhole people later. Um, 
So I think that's it, and should we begin? I, may I call on the uh, first chair of our first session, who is uh, Sam Barnes. Where are you? Oh, there you are, <laughs> okay. Yeah, all right, so I'm turning it over to you. Stay on time. I'll try to. All right, let's see. Yeah.